You're excited about a curse. Something wrong with my child. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. My name is Shayna and in my little corner of the internet we talk about spooky history of all kinds. If that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell because I upload every week. Or if podcasts are more your thing, I do have a podcast called Spooky History with Shayna Blake and I will have a link down in the description for you. Now, once a month, my mom and I sit down and we talk about unsolved mysteries, and we called this series Mysteries with My Mom, or hashtag MWMM. Hello! And today <laughs> is episode four. So if you've never seen us before, I, like I said earlier, my name's Shayna. This is my mom. Teresa. <laughs> Momo. Now, what we do is I find an interesting mystery, and then I tell my mom about it to get her reaction. Last month, we had a video that was the Skinwalker Ranch. That was a pretty interesting one wouldn't yeah. you say yes so are you ready for today's video i'm ready i got my phone she's got her phone for okay. her notes what's it about what's it called we are going to be talking about hollywood curses Ooh. <laughs> actually got this idea from my husband he was talking about a hollywood curse the other day and i was like what's that about and so he's like well just look up this name i'm like okay and so i did and i'm like okay i guess i'll do so i have two hollywood curses we're gonna talk about today all right one of them i know you know about i know that because you told me a long time ago but i've got the specifics for it so i'm pretty excited all right you're excited about a curse Something wrong with my child. It's not a curse to me. <laughs> I feel bad for the people involved. But. So the first one we will be talking about is the James Dean car curse. Mm. Have you heard of that one yet? Yes. Okay, I figured. It's kind of an older one. Um, <laughs> not saying you're old. I'm just saying it's been around for a while and uh -huh. you might have heard of it since you've heard of the other one. So let's talk about who James Dean is for all the young people out there listening. He was born Born February 8th of 1931 and he was an American actor. He was known for three films that he was in. He was in Rebel Without a Cause, which was released on 1955, then East of Eden, that was also released in 1955, and then a movie called Giant that was released in 1956. And James Dean died in a car crash on September 30th of 1955. So he died the same year two of his movies came out. Yeah, two of them were released. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was the first actor to receive a posthumous Academy Award, it's kind of spelled weird, for best actor for his role in East of Eden. Then in 1999, the American Film Institute ranked him the 18th best male movie star of the golden age Hollywood. And he was only 24 when he died. Wow, that's young. Mm -hmm. I know James Dean was before your time. Thank you. I know he was. <laughs> But did you know any of his movies or did grandpa watch any of his movies when you were growing up? I don't remember. Okay. I, I think I came across one of his movies on, I think it was like Turner Classic Movies or something like that years ago, but I don't think I was living with him at that time. So, okay. yeah. Wasn't sure. Figured I'd ask. Cause I don't think I've seen any of his movies. I've heard of his name because he's mm -hmm. a big name, but I've never seen any of his movies that I know of. Well, I always thought of like uh, Fonzie on Happy Days because he had a poster in his oh. closet of James Dean. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> kind of like a tribute to him, I guess. Yeah, it's part of his leather jacket theme, I think. <laughs> oh, really? He wore a <laughs> jacket that. like that? It was in the poster, I believe. So, oh, I yeah. see. I see. That makes sense. So now that we have a little backstory about James Dean, let's talk about his cursed car. Okay. Now, James was a huge fan of car racing. He loved driving fast. For insurance reasons, he wasn't allowed to race while he was filming the movie Giant. But as soon as that movie wrapped, he was ready to get on the road. James would end up purchasing his dream car, and it was a silver 1955 Porsche 550 Spider. Mm. It's kind of slick looking. Um, I wonder if that's where they kind of got the name for those new motorcycles that have been out for a few years now, the Spider. I don't know, maybe. Mm. It was one in only 90 cars in that series. He was in love with this car. He showed it off to anyone and everyone. Now, not everyone really liked the car. Some of his friends, Alec Guinness and Eartha Kitt, would tell James that this car would be the death of him. They immediately felt bad vibes coming from the car. Then two other friends, Nick Adams and Ursula Andrus, would refuse to even get in the car. 
Mm. Just said there was some bad juju that they could feel. It's the original Christine. <laughs> <laughs> it was just nine days after purchasing this car that James would die in a car crash while on his way to a racing event in Salinas. How crazy is that? Well, they put it out there in the universe when they said, this will be the death of you, and it literally was. But the thing is, is he wasn't even speeding. He wasn't driving fast. It wasn't his fault on why the accident happened. Right. The other driver who was coming from an opposite direction of James, was attempting to make a left turn across James's lane, but just failed to see James's low slug car in the dusk light and just ram right into him. The tragic accident is what it was. Mm. Now, after James's death, more odd and strange things would start to happen that would in turn lead to people claiming that the car was cursed. So I have a list of everything. There's six things that, that I have wrote down that has happened. We'll just kind of briefly wow. go over them. Okay. First thing that's happened. The car was sold to a Dr. Eistrick and he had actually competed against James in a race a few months before James's death. He used the engine and other mechanical parts for his car. That was with James's car. Mm -hmm. He used the engine and certain parts for his own car and loaned some other parts from James's car to a Dr. Troy McHenry. So they were both using parts from James's spider car. They both competed in the Pomono sports car races where Dr. Eistrick was mildly injured when his car rolled while driving in a race trying to take a curve. Then Dr. Troy McHenry was killed when his car spun out of control and hit a tree. Oh my. Sounds horrible. Yeah. And they both wow. had parts from that same car. So after James's death, death the car was car, pretty much no, no longer drivable. So right. they just took parts from it. So they used parts from it for their own. Mm -hmm. And then they both got in an accident yeah. in the same race. And one of them died. Wow. The second, she didn't like being taken apart. No, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> I wonder if any parts were used previously for another car used into this brand new car. Shouldn't have been. It was a brand new yeah, car. Brand new. So that would have been bad if they did. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them because it was like way back in the day, mm. but who knows? Now, the second thing to have happened, George Barris, who was an auto customizer, he would end up with the car's mangled body. While the car was being stored at Barris's shop, a young man who was attempting to steal the steering wheel would receive a gash on his arm to the bone from a piece of the car's jagged metal. Another kid who would try to steal a piece of the blood-soaked upholstery got injured as well. <laughs> Not so good things happening around this car. No, no. The third thing that happened was two of the car's surviving tires were sold to a young man and they both simultaneously blew out on the highway, sending the guy's car in the ditch. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's just one thing after another. <laughs> oh my goodness. I did not know of all this. Yeah, it's crazy. The fourth thing that happened is between 1957 and 1960, the car was shown at a national auto show and safety exhibit. While it was being transported, the truck driver died when the car fell off the flatbed and crushed him to death. Then once it made to the exhibit, it was stored in a garage and the garage unit would catch fire. Thankfully, no one was hurt at this time, but the car didn't suffer any damage. <laughs> Just everything around Just it. Just everything around it. Wow. Yeah. So the truck driver was like just walking by it at some point and then it crushed him. It fell off the back and crushed him. That's that's what it made it sound like, yeah. It's out for blood. It needs blood to survive. Oh my word. Okay. <laughs> The fifth thing to have happened. On the fourth anniversary of James Dean's death, the car was on display at Sacramento <laughs> High School when the bolts holding the car down snapped. The car careened off the display and would break the hip of a 15-year-old boy. So everyone that's been injured so far is a male. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Oh, she does not like men. <laughs> she does not like men. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Last thing. The car would mysteriously disappear in 1960. It was returning from the traffic safety exhibit in Florida in a sealed truck and was being shipped back in a sealed box car. When the train arrived in Los Angeles, George Barris signed the manifest and verified that the seal was intact, but the box car was empty. So where did it go? So it disappeared. 
it disappeared. Somehow it reappeared. Details are hazy. And the car was recently sold in 2021 for 387,000, which really isn't that much in my opinion. You're Could be just a, because it's a cursed car. You're selling a curse. I mean, it's James Dean's car. So you, you think it's selling the, sell the millions, but I guess mm -hmm. it since it having the reputation of being a cursed car, nobody really wanted it, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so it disappeared in 1960. Mm -hmm. It somehow so reappeared. All these deaths happened in five years, or injuries happened within five years, mm -hmm. and then it reappeared. Do you know when? No, it doesn't no. say. I'm, I don't. I think it was like not long after it ah. reappeared, but I don't know how. So the seal was not broken, mm -hmm. which makes me think that it was never put in the box. It car. was never put in the box car, or a whole new seal was put on, and the numbers changed. I don't know. Mm. Got any thoughts so far before we move on to uh, seeing if these myths are true or not? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I think I have them on my notes so far. I can keep up. <laughs> so myths are fun to talk about. We all know that. But We're they aren't always true. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't fun for the people involved. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it wanted to be owned by a woman. Plain and simple. <laughs> Plain and my simple. Word. It wanted to be owned by a woman. By a woman. This is the only car out of 90. 90 that were made. It wanted a woman as an owner. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. Maybe it was a male car. It didn't want other men around it. I don't know. Weird it's stuff. It's like a cat, not a spider. <laughs> Okay, okay, go on. Go on. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> go ahead. Well, most of these stories come from a book that came out in 1974 called Cars of the Stars, which was written by none other than George Barris, the car's owner after the accident. The one that got injured but not killed. Yeah. Did he get injured? I don't know if he was. Didn't he, he own it after? Injured. He owned it after James Dean. He got the mangled body of it. He didn't get injured. While it was in his shop, two young men got okay. injured. Okay. With him being the owner of James Dean's car and author of this book, it definitely would financially benefit him if he were to have a mythically cursed car. Correct. Surprisingly though, some of these stories can be corroborated. Dr. Eistrich's injury and Dr. McHenry's death while using parts from the car is really true. Then the fire in the garage where the car was being stored was true and verifiable. All the other stories are pretty much hearsay. It's impossible to say whether these other stories were really true or if they're just part of creating the myths surrounding the car. I mean, it's really not that far-fetched for something to come detach from a, a semi-truck and land on a oh. truck driver that, type yeah. thing. I don't understand about bolts breaking and the bolt snapping that was holding it down. Yeah. That's possible too if they weren't put on correctly. Yeah, yeah that's all possible. It's not, it's... They're not out of this world events. Right. That I mean, are impossible. They are, they are they're, they're just not, enough described as being believable because yeah. you can really see something like that happening as an accident. Yeah. So hmm. now there is a man who is a James Dean biographer and his name is Lee Raskin and he believes that the disappearance of the car is actually a myth. He believes that Barris decided to just state that the car disappeared while being sealed in a box car just to get a fan appeal back. But it is true that James Dean's friends had a bad feeling about the car and warned him about it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? I mean, you already said it's kind of possible that those things could have happened and that George Barris could have really been the only one witnessing all of these things. Mm -hmm. So tires blown up. Why would you use tires that have been in a car accident? Metal and everything would be around them during that accident, you know? Well, there is a way to test tires to make sure that they're usable. Right, but I would put them up on a wall or something like that, I wouldn't put them on another vehicle. Maybe the person that got the tires from George didn't know anything about it. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he paid a pretty penny for them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe. So hmm. you ready to move on to another Hollywood curse? Sure. So the next one is called the Poltergeist Curse. <laughs> The Poltergeist curse. The movie, The Poltergeist. Oh, okay. The curse. You were oh, telling actual... me about that a long time ago. The movie. Yeah, the mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, I was like, we need to watch those on Halloween. You're like, no. You know, I see a lot of these movies anymore. And to me, I can already tell you who they are and, you know, who's doing it. And, and they're just like reruns. But the Pulsar Guys. Oh, The Shining. Mm. Those two are the... Shining is like a three hour long movie. I'm sorry. But... <sighs> Those, those would be perfect Halloween movies. 
But yeah, I knew you would remember that one because I know you told me about that one mm. and it scared me. <laughs> yeah, you won't even watch it. No. <laughs> so the original movie, The Poltergeist, was released in 1982 and was directed by Toby Hooper and produced by Spielberg. This movie was an instant success and is considered to be a masterpiece of American horror cinema. Now, like I said, I have never seen this movie. I don't have plans <laughs> in the future of ever seeing this movie, <laughs> which honestly, if I were to see it now, I probably would be like, that's silly. You know, that's silly because I've seen so many other really scarier movies, but still, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. They're here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Now this movie is about a middle class family whose life is turned upside down when a number of paranormal and vicious events occur in their California home. Their daughter, Carol Ann, is abducted through a bedroom closet by a group of ghosts who are under the control of a demon called the Beast. After learning that their house sits atop a Native American burial ground, the family would spend their time trying to retrieve Carol Ann. It's said that four cast members died during and soon after the filming of the movie. In fact, the idea of the movie even being cursed came from the death of the four cast members. Now, the first death was Heather Aurora, the young girl who played Carol Ann. Heather mm. was only six when the first Poltergeist film was released. She was known to captivate the audience with her beautiful blonde hair and big eyes. Heather would get sick and somehow be misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987. The following year, Heather would become ill again, but her symptoms were attributed to being the flu. Then a day later, she collapsed and suffered a cardiac arrest. After she was airlifted to a children's hospital in San Diego, Heather would end up dying during an operation that was attempting to correct a bowel obstruction. That would be discovered after the fact that she had actually been suffering from a congenital intestinal abnormality. Oh my goodness. Very sad, but very weird for such a young girl to be going through. Mm-hmm. That's her heart. Now, the second death was Dominique Dunn. I think it's Dunn. It's D-U-N-N-E. So it's either Dunn or Dune. I'm not sure. But Dominique played the older sister, Dana. In 1982, Dominique would separate from her partner, John Sweeney. Then in November of that year, he showed up at Dominique's home pleading for her to take him back. When she refused, he would grab her neck and choked her until she was unconscious and left her to die in the driveway of her house. John would be sentenced to only six and a half years in prison, but would only serve three years and seven months. How messed up is that? Yeah, don't get me started. Then the last two deaths were of Julian Beck and Will Sampson. Julian Beck played the evil preacher Kane from Poltergeist 2. In 1983, Julian would be diagnosed with stomach cancer, which would take his life soon after he finished work on the second installment of the series. Then the same film was met with another tragedy involving Will Sampson, who played Taylor, the Native American shaman. He would die after undergoing a heart-lung transplant. So what are you thinking so far? I mean, like, have you heard any of these before? These are the four deaths that really solidified the idea of these movies are cursed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was cursed. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I have no explanation. I just know it. I mean, when, when it comes to native lands, like we talked before on Skinwalker, it comes to native lands and burial grounds and... Well, it wasn't really put on a burial ground. In the movie, just in the movie, the home was built on top of a burial ground. Right. Not not in real life. But it was my understanding that the crew, that they actually used some uh, remains, actual remains of... I haven't skeletals. gotten to that part yet, so you're ruining this for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, that was part of the curse. <laughs> That was the whole thing. <laughs> but it, it didn't, it doesn't have anything to do with Native American burial grounds. I'll get to it. Yeah, I don't. Let me get to it. So these deaths weren't the only strange things that happened. There were other creepy legends that were surrounding the film franchise. Now, this has never been verified. Joe Beth Williams, who played the mom, Diane, would mm -hmm. say that Spielberg, the director, insisted on using only human skeletons as props in an attempt to save money. Mm -hmm. I guess that at the time they were cheaper to use the real skeletons instead of plastic ones. But it doesn't have anything to do with Native American Indian burial grounds, nothing like that. It's just real life skeletons is all. Which I mean, I believe. I mean, that's Native. that's a big deal, but it doesn't have to deal with it doesn't have to do with just specifically Native American bones. Mm -hmm. Just 
people's skeletons that they could find that mm. were available to use for props. Okay, I was thinking it was Native American bones that they used. Well, they probably got that crossed whenever they were talking about Native American in the movie. So if you find out later that it's Native American skeletons that they used, we can talk about that in the next one if you want. No, bring it up. I think your fans can research that and figure that out. True. <laughs> If you know, let us know. We'll read the comments. <laughs> okay, so the last thing about this movie is that in an effort to really creep everyone out, Samson, who was a real-life medicine man who passed away due to circumstances that we mentioned above, performed an authentic exorcism after shooting had wrapped up one night. I think that would just kind of make everything worse. Wouldn't you? Well, I'm sorry, but if he was a real life medicine man and he tried to make things better and he ends up dying, I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> really? Oh, my goodness. My that word. would scare me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it obviously it didn't work. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't work. Well, I mean, if everything stopped after that, then it all just came after him. You know? True, true. So do we have any final thoughts about these two Hollywood curses? I thought they were pretty interesting. Yeah, I remember the part about a, a blessing, but I didn't know that he had passed as well. And I knew about, the, about them wanting to use actual human remains. Mm -hmm. Where they got them from, I don't know. I was pretty sure what they had going on in the in the pool that they were real human that remains. they were real human remains um, i was thinking some people actually got sick after that scene too probably which i wouldn't doubt mm -mm. all that bacteria and stuff off the skeletons yeah in I the pool they did back then for anything like they that. probably but didn't yeah. obviously if they're using real skeletons they didn't have any like health regulations <laughs> like that <laughs> Well, that's going to be it for us today. I hope you enjoyed listening to these stories. Let us know in the comments on whether you believe these things really happened or whether you think they were just weird coincidences. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. It does help out my channel. Or if you're on the podcast, be sure to leave a review if you can. We're just happy you are here watching and listening. Hope you all have a very blessed week, and we will see you all later. Bye! Bye. I remembered. It was a fly. <laughs> what? I didn't get my phone dry. Oh, it got wet? I sprayed it, get little fingerprints off of it. <laughs> and my glasses. You're living dangerously. I'm living dangerously? Yeah, you might want to put that on the left side. <laughs> but then it'll be in the shot. Look like we're a couple of boozers. It's water. <laughs> it's juice. I'm ready, testing, one, two, three. Awesome.